Uh, welcome to this edition of Good Fun Stability. Today I have Clidis, who is in the UK, and she has um, a meiotic band syndrome, which is something I've never he heard about before. It's amazing that the number of conditions and disabilities that are prevalent worldwide, and due to lack of ignorance, we are treated differently. Yeah. You, 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 can you tell us a bit about your condition and how what effect it has had on you as an individual? Yeah. So I have amniotic band syndrome, like you said. Um, I myself only found found out um, last year that that this is what I had. Um, uh, but as I was approaching 30, I said that's something that I wanted to do. I wanted to find out what my disability was called because um, when I was born, the doctors just told my parents that it's just one of those things at the time they didn't know. Um, so what amniotic band syndrome is, is um, it's fluid from the amniotic sac. It's, it detaches itself from the womb and attaches itself around like your, um, your limb, so your finger. So with me, Obviously, this hand formed, but then this hand didn't. So it was like it was going to form, but then the amniotic sac got around, and it like it, it's almost like it cuts them off. That's what it does, and it same with my my feet. So I don't have any toes or any ankles. So yeah, and it, and it, it's 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 strange. It's one in a a million. Like I don't know what the odds are because it's not hereditary. Because it's not on my dad's side. It's not on my mum's side. It literally is just. It can happen to anybody. It can happen to absolutely anybody. Um, how it affected me. So it, it, it's funny, I was quite an energetic child, like I'm 31 now. And um, growing up, my parents never really treated me as such that like, like I had a disability. My dad died at 11, when I was 11, sorry. Um, so yeah, from 11 to like now, um, like my mom, my brothers, my friends never really treated me as like, oh God, Glenish, you can't do this, Glenish, you can't do that. It was always just have a go, try. I realized I had a physical disability it was when I got to primary school when uh, I was bullied quite badly for three years by three boys. It was ex extremely bad. Um, I would get hit over the head with books, thrown things, throwing stuff at me, racial comments. I would get called wooden legs. It, it was a horrible time for me. And my confidence literally went from probably from about, I don't know, 50 to probably minus 10. Like I, all, I covered my hand. I never ever showed my hand. If I go out, it would be in my pocket or I would like purposely get a scarf um, before leaving the house so that I wrap it around my hand. Nobody would see it. I, well, I was so ashamed. I was so embarrassed. I didn't want anyone to see it because I made, I was made to feel at school so different and like un, unwanted. Um, and it's funny now, at the time I didn't realize it, but like what's happening with COVID and all that stuff, it also made me aware. It also was because I was black as well. I'm sure if I was white and I was disabled, it wouldn't be as much, especially working as a TA, a teaching assistant in a the school, there are disabled children in the school that are white and never, like, I don't ever see them being picked on or it, it, it's different, like, colour does make a difference. And maybe because I was a child then, I didn't know. But obviously now as an adult, I'm realising, yeah, that, like, I had more of a, of a, they had more of an effect on me because it was like, yeah, no, she's disabled, she's black, let's pick on her, you know? So, um Unfortunately, from primary school up until I want to say, if I'm honest, probably like last year, late last year, that's where my confidence just went from, I don't know, let's say 15 to like 2000, because um, my friend sent me a text to get, um, so basically I had just got back into sport, which is swimming. I love to swim. And she sent me a text and the text was, Basically, they're looking for people that have just got back into swimming and what barriers, um, what what barriers, like, what what's the word I'm looking for? What stops them? Yeah, that's it. What stops them from, like, doing the activity? So I signed up for it, um, not knowing that it was going to be, like, a big commercial here over in London called This Girl Can. And This Girl Can is a campaign 
that empowers women to get back into sport, to be active. And I entered and luckily I was one of the ladies that they picked. And it was such a such an honor because they've they haven't had any disabled women before. The campaign has been running for five years now. And that like when I say I'm so in depth to them because they gave me the confidence to just not care, like who cares, you know, who who looks at you and stuff like they made me realize I was beautiful with with my disability or even if I don't have I am beautiful and I really realized that so like unfortunately yep yeah, COVID happened 2020 was meant to be my year to shine I was doing a lot of interviews and stuff but it's fine because you know COVID is kind of up and down at the moment but it's not stopping me from doing what I want to do um and I think yeah like I feel like right now my time is to shine I literally just woke up I'm a Christian as well and God literally just said it's my time to shine and educate people inspire them like I've got a disability but I get up every morning I go to work you know I've got nieces and nephews I take them out I go out with friends I like dancing so sometimes again people would never realize that I have a disability because I also walk very well you know so like my, my motto is like not all disabilities are visible you know like I have one you might not be able to see it that doesn't mean I don't have one but then also just because I have one that doesn't mean I should just sit down and do nothing I'm still going to live my life like like it's golden you know there's let, let me share my screen so, so that we can we can watch watch your ad yeah. okay no problem yeah ad Which one is it? Is it this? Is it um? Oh, good. Cool. No, you have, you have to it? go down. And, no, go down. As you go down more. Yeah. Is yeah, there you go. This the one. This room. one. That one is the interview, and then the ne one next to it is the actual advert. Okay. So they're both the advert, but like, yeah. Well, that, that, that is that mm -hmm. is a, that is a great advice. I, I I was I saw it it when I first started chatting with you a couple of months ago, and I was mm -hmm. really I was really impressed because I mean it it gives visibility, yeah, to to people with disabilities as well. Because I mean I feel that for a long time nothing has. has in the media has really included us, whether it is adverts, whether it is um, sitcoms or whatever. I mean, we have yeah. we have been left left out of the whole thing. So whenever I see, yeah. see something like this, it makes me it, it brings some joy into my heart. So yeah, oh, man. thank but, you. But, but let me come up so that we can see your feet. Mm -hmm. So these are so this is what your your foot looks like. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like a stump. It's a stump, yeah. Okay. So, so, so do you have a, a, a prosthetic foot? Yes. That's it. That's so basically the one you can see in the picture. Those that's are what I wear. Um, that's what I wear when I'm in the house. Okay. Yeah. And hold on. Let me. If I then. Uh, Should I go up or down? Yeah. So there you go. 
So this is what I wear when okay. I'm in the house. Okay. So that I could add them like a mini version. And then I have my everyday legs that I wear when I'm going to work. So, so, so you can choose your own shoe size. Yep. <laughs> that, that's kind of cool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, it is. My friends in school always used to be so jealous. They'd be like, oh, Glennis, you can cho- choose your own shoe size or you can um, choose how tall you want to be. And I'm like, yes, I can. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think I think we have to find humor and and, and, and enjoy some of these things. Otherwise, we'll probably feel so depressed and bad exactly. about ourselves exactly. and all those things. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah. So, like for me, for instance, I always make sure that I I get the the funky, you know, working age, pretty mm. pretty up my practice. Yeah, yeah, all those things. Yeah, otherwise, because because I mean, growing up, we were taught that I mean, having a disability is not it is it is, it is an unfortunate thing. But then, yeah. but then I think we we should we should, we should we, it's up to us to bring some positivity into it. So mm-hmm. I, I recently saw, saw a saying which I like very much. So I made a, a cup out of it. You say disability isn't a bad word. No, it's not. It's really not. It's not. It's not, it's not a bad it's not. word. It's not. And I think we, we, we need to remind ourselves of mm. that from time to time. So, yeah. so, so, so can you walk without the, um, without the, the prosthetic? I used to, when I was younger, I used to, but I put on a lot of weight, so I can't anymore, unless I'm wearing the small ones in the house. Okay. I can't walk around, but no, not, not, not just with the stamps. I can't, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, so what has it been like mentally, in terms of your mental health? Because I saw a video that you posted um, mm-hmm. about, about how you, you are not in a good place last year, around this yeah. time, I believe. Yeah, and, yeah. And 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 actually, you said after 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 that, it it was like um like something came came about you, and you realized that yes, yeah yeah you are worthy of so much more than than you are giving yourself. But mm-hmm. but before that, I mean, obviously, you were you feeling sorry for yourself? Are you feeling why me? Why? <laughs> so basically, um, I was approaching thirty last year and around like so basically I always go to Ghana for Christmas I love Ghana and um on my way back here um I started to feel like really dizzy and unwell and stuff and I didn't realize it but I was stressed because I was coming back by myself because my mum was still in Ghana and um I don't know why I don't know how because like I said I felt okay but like all of a sudden I start to feel unwell, I started to feel dizzy and I'll be going to work and I kind of collapsed at work. And I didn't know what was wrong with me at the time, but I found out I had like a type of vertigo. Um, that's a form of dizziness. Yeah. And I actually had a rare one called BPPV. And it can kind of flare up if like, I mean, it, everything is always down to stress, but what the doctor was also telling me as well is if I've, have I just recently come from somewhere abroad and I was like yeah I just come from Ghana and he said yeah that could be it and obviously if you're stressed you need to relax and it's funny it took me about a month or two to realize what I was actually stressed about and it was approaching 30 you know I'm still single I'm not married um, I'm not in the job that I want to be in uh, you know I'm training I'm right now I'm training to be an actress um, as much as I love kids I feel like I've been there for five years I want to now do something else and it was just quite upsetting that I, I hadn't hit my goals at 30. So then going back to being single, I just said, oh, it's because I'm disabled. I bet if I wasn't disabled, you know, I would have a man by now, I'd have a husband. Um, and then um, my friend as well, obviously, you know, you've got like a circle of friends. My friend was the last one apart from me to get married. So it's like now everybody has a partner. Glenna still doesn't have anyone. She's still single or they're living with their partners or they've got children, I don't have anything. So I kind of saw that as 
at that time last year as like a fail. How can you reach 30 and you don't, you're not married, you don't have kids, you don't have the, the good job that you want, you're not earning as much as you want. And yeah, it just, it really messed with my mental health. It really did. And then I literally just, there was times where I would sit back and I would just be like, I just wish I wasn't disabled. Because at, the, at that point, I just thought if I wasn't disabled, that would be the key to everything. That means my life would be perfect. And then it, it was through, like, I even went to therapy twice because, like I said, it was really affecting me and I really wanted to get some help. And I'm so glad that I did because my mental health is nowhere, Farida, nowhere near, at, like, where it used to be. And I, I, I thank God every single day. I'm so happy. And it's just always you need to be positive. Like, the fact that now, like I said, I'm in part-time drama school, that's my happy place. Whenever I go there, I'm so happy. To the point where it's like, when my husband comes, that's whenever he will come. You know, like I have a saying, like if you dance, if you dance with God, He will let the right man cut in. So, where my when my time comes is when my time comes. I just have to be patient. And I think a lot of my friends were saying, Glennis, you're not old. You're only 31. There are people that are 40, 41. They still have kids. So what's your problem? So it's just all about patience. And I'm quite happy within myself now because. I'm fulfilling my dreams. I went on an advert. I showed my hand and my stamps. Even just now for um, International Day of People with Disabilities last week on the 3rd, I, I, I posted pictures in different outfits, something I've never done or, you know, something I never thought I would ever do or be quite embarrassed because it's one thing to show my hand, but another thing to show my stamps. But I look at those pictures now and I'm like, wow, Glenish, you're, you're beautiful. I love them. You know, do you know what I mean? So yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I get I, I get what I get what you are saying because I'm am, I'm am 41 and um, I, I'm also not married and I like you sometimes I feel that if look if you are not for this blasted disability maybe I I would have be married or have children yeah. but, but 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 then when you think about it there are people without disabilities who are who are in the same boat as exactly as, as us so. Exactly. It's just not our time, and it's not and, our time, yeah. And, and as, as Christians, we have to be patient and wait yeah. on, on God, because because at the right time, He'll bring the right person to us. A amen. Yeah. Because, because 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 believe me, you, you don't want to do, to get to, to get involved with the wrong person who will mess you up and yeah. cause cause even more, more harm to your mental health. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure, sure, sure. As women, we, we, we start worrying about our biological clock ticking mm, all the time. And, and trust me, as I said, I'm, I'm 10 year, years older than you. So, so yeah. man, man, man is, 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 is ticking more than you. But yeah. I believe that at the right time, God will bring the right person. And, yeah. and, 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 and and I mean, let's face it, he's a miracle working God. He, if he can give Sarah so, so, so a child at 90, whatever, how much more? Exactly. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. Our time is just not yet. Our time is coming. And that's yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, when you think about it, sometimes it is because you want uh, us to do certain things which, 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 which we will not have the time to do if we have children and a husband. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, because, because believe me, if you if you if you were married and you had a child, you 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 did be able to go to Java school. Uh, who, who yeah, knows? Who knows? or travel a lot because I'm somebody that likes to travel. I won't be able to travel a lot. You're right. Yeah, so, so I mean, you have you you have to think about it that way and and know that that at the end of the day, he has your back. Yeah, amen. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So so. So you said you, you like to come to Ghana a lot. And let's say it, Ghana is, is not the most disability friendly country in the world. So, nope. so, so and, and let's face it, we, we, we are also a bit uh, insensitive when it comes to people with disabilities. So I can imagine the, mm -hmm. kind, of, the kind of questions you have gotten about your hands and, you know. Oh, yeah, loads. Um, I don't know um, if you, you might have saw it. Well, I came to Ghana this year and I was um, interviewed three times. So I was on TV3. Really? I was on yeah yeah I was on TV three I was on um, TV Africa and I was on Ob Obaba 
Is that how you say it? Obaba show or something? It comes on Sundays. Obama. I I I understand that I I I know that's what you're talking about. With Rosalind Rosalind uh, Philly. Yeah. Yeah. I was there, and basically, um, because of the interviews that I did here, um, I, there was somebody that noticed me at the airport when I arrived this year, and <laughs> that's why I'm saying God is 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 wonderful because he he tapped me on my shoulder and he was like, didn't I just see you on the news in London? And I said, oh yeah, that was me, and he was just like, how about because obviously he asked me, am, am I a Ghanaian? I said, oh yeah, I am. My parents, although I was born in London, my parents, they are Ghans, they were born in Ghana. And he said, oh, what about if you do some um, media over here in Ghana? Because you know how Ghana and disability is. So I went, I'll, I'll send them to you. I'll send you all the interviews. But um, yeah, no, it was such an amazing, I went on with, like I said, with Rosalind and Feli twice. And then a guy called Johnny from TV3. I took my legs off. A lot of people in Ghana saw it because I got a lot of calls from aunties and uncles. I took my leg off. I danced. I explained exactly like how I was born. I showed them my leg. And then there's even a children's center in Isawam. I went there. I think I went there about like three or four times. Uh, that shame on the news as well that I was on. Because um, they basically, the, the, the place where I went to is literally specifically for children with like um, children yeah. that need your limbs yeah so whenever no, I'm in I do go there yeah so I was literally I want wanted what I wanted from doing the um, interviews I wanted the perception of oh if you have a disability it's a taboo oh you will amount to nothing oh this one leave this one there or you know no because fair enough someone can argue but you live in London but I've, I've gone to Ghana and I've stayed there for like three or two or three months and I've been fine do you, do you know what I mean so it, and like I sometimes I even say because London can be so frustrating sometimes I say I'm a Ghanaian I will not even bring the British into it like it's very manageable to live in Ghana with a disability you like look at you Farida you're doing it as well like I've gone to Ghana I've lived there for some time I did it it's possible so again it's like the, people need to just stop being a bit ignorant because you've got this that means you can't do that no I never thought I'd be able to travel by myself. I travel by myself all the time. I drive, I've been driving for six years, whereas some of my friends that are not even disabled don't know how to drive and can't drive. Do you know what I mean? So there's always, I'm just always trying to like motivate people. And even when I'm trying to motivate people, I'm even trying to even motivate myself more because there are days where I can't be bothered. There are days I don't want to go to work. There are days I don't want to put my legs on, but I have to put my legs on, otherwise I can't go to work. <laughs> I won't be able to drive. I have to do these things. So you just have to keep keep telling yourself the end goal. You know, you're not going to be in this job for long. The acting is going to pick up. You know, you're going to be an entrepreneur. You're going to keep inspiring people. You've got to keep reminding yourself of the end goal while you're doing it. And in the end, you will get there. That's what I generally believe. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I mean, it's, it's, it's just much more difficult for us. But then I think that... <laughs> We, we have to be more determined than the average person to, to achieve yeah. our goals. Yeah. 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 So, so what? So, so obviously you, you you do everything with with your right hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so just now, you know, buttoning your shirt, all those things. What are the challenges that you have? Because I mean, not about your cerebral policy. I mean, part of the most. Uh, it's, it's, it's yeah. So easy for us, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I think with me, it's trial and error. So, like, I did this headscarf just now before coming on to speak to you. It's just I've had to grow up finding ways and means of how to do things for myself. So I never be, I was never able to tie a shoelace. I learned how to do it. I never was able to like tie my hair into like when well, you know when you wash your hair, you condition it and then you do twists. Yeah. I could never do that. I learned how to do that probably when I was about maybe 25 or 26. And again, it's literally just like, I have a video in, video on that on my page mm. where I just videoed myself. This is how I twist. I just, it's literally just trying and error. I just try things out. Don't get me wrong. There are times when I'm trying it out. I can't do it. I get frustrated. I might even, I'll have the hairband in my hand and I'll throw it, <laughs> throw it on the floor out of frustration. Like, why can't I do it? 
And then if I'm fed up of trying, I'll probably go to my mum and be like, mum, can you just do this hairstyle? I can't do it. Or help me do this dress or help me do this button. I can't do it. But with that, I'm obviously, as I'm older now, I just keep, like, what I do if I find myself getting angry, I'll just stop, <laughs> give myself some, like, five minutes, breathe, and then try again, and then just take my time. Because then like, what I feel like when I'm getting annoyed or restless, what I then do is I don't concentrate or take my time. So it's just, it's still not happening because I'm annoyed. So, yeah, I think with that, it's just, it's trial and error. But majority, certain things I can do with just my right hand anyway, I find. And then my left hand just gives it that bit of support if it needs be. But I'm, I'm quite good with certain things. If, if I'm, I can actually write with this hand if I balance a pen, like in this bit. Obviously, it's very messy. Like, I'm sure if you need to write with the other hand, it's the same. But again, trial and error. I said, one day, let me just see if I can write with this hand. And I just got it. And then you see, like, how I flex it. I just flex it like that. So mm-hmm. that the pen is stable. And then I just start writing. Have you thought about getting a prosthetic hand? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't like it. I didn't like it. I feel like felt like it um, rather held me back. I couldn't do a lot of things. I'm quite I'm quite um flexible without it and I feel like with it 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 stopped me from doing a lot of things so yeah it wasn't for me and uh, what are some of the of, of the discomforts you have with with, with the pathetic like, like because I mean I, I've spoken to a few people who are like I think as they come home they can't wait to move to move their legs and relax <laughs> When I, I literally said, okay, I'm coming on to talk with Farida. I said, let me let me quickly take my legs off. I'm, right now I'm lying down on my bed. Like the air, it just feels so good. Like just, cause you got to think about like, so for me, I wake up at like quarter to seven in the morning. I don't come back home till like 3 um, p.m. in the afternoon. So I don't, how many hours is that? That's more than six hours. My legs are just on. And then especially like if I come home, and I don't know, maybe I have to go out again. My legs can be on for majority of what, a good 12 hours a day. So no air is getting there. No, you know, it's just, it's sometimes it's just too much, especially in summer, awful. But then it's funny because I get a lot of questions, Glen, Glenis, you go to Ghana so much. So how do you cope there? But then I tell them it's a different type of heat. London heat is like when it's really, really hot here, it's yeah. sticky. Yeah. It's, um, what's the word? You feel very irritated. Whereas with Ghana, it's just pure sweat. It's the fat. All it is, is and it, I call it like a good sweat. So it doesn't actually disturb me as much. Whereas here, it's not really a summer. It's not proper summer. I've never experienced it. 31 years in my life, I've never experienced proper summer in these countries. Only when I go to Ghana. So that's why it doesn't really bother me. You know? But um, yeah, that's, that's about it. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. So, so, so do you ha- have different different legs? I mean, is it like like you have legs for the weekdays, like like for the weekends, or just one? Oh no, just one, just one <laughs> pair of legs. Like that, I, like for for weekend, for weekday, going to parties, staying in the house, and then like I said, I have like slippers, but mini legs that I wear just in the house. Okay. So just two, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cute. That's good. Me, what, what is freaking me out is the fact that, that you, can, you, you can choose your, your shoe size. So, yeah. so I mean, you can, because you know, people with, with big feet, there are certain shoes, there are lots of shoes that, that they can get, whereas those with smaller feet can't can get yeah. really nice shoes. So, yeah. So, does it have any impact on your balance? So, can you wear three inch heels? Yeah, yeah, I can wear heels, um, let's say maybe about this size. Okay. Oh, no, hold on. About. Pen- yeah. Pencil or block? Oh, block. I can't do pencil. I'll fall over. <laughs> uh, pencil. I, no, no, no. Block. <laughs> Always be block. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So, so how's the acting going? Um, uh, you, you, you're also modeling as well. I, as I said, I saw your, um, your, your, your modeling, your ad on, on, on the on hidden, on hidden website. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, acting is going really well. We have um, closed for this term. This was my second term. Um, I went and did like a video show reel on the weekend just gone. So we'll resume back in January for the third term. But so far, so good. I'm really, really loving it. I'm hoping to get an agent out of this and start some bookings. Um, and with the modeling, it's funny. Um, a friend tags me on um, on Unhidden's page. They were looking for models to come and model the adaptive clothing. And obviously the keyword for me was disabled. So I'm not somebody that's into modeling whatsoever. I don't have any, you know. But I said, you know what? Let's just go and see what it's about. You never know, it could lead me to like other places could open doors for me so let's try so I went and yeah lo and behold it was it was like a, a nice photo shoot it was something different something new I enjoyed it so I'm, like I'm open to, to to modeling now if I'm honest yeah why not so what, what, what do you think about the unhidden clothing line oh no no it's good it's good I talked to um the owner, the creator of it, Victoria, quite a bit. I'm very proud that she's done this. Um, yeah, it's what it's what needs to be to to be heard and to be seen. Like I know for a fact that you know all the some of the other models that I, um, I modelled with, it can be difficult, especially if you're in a wheelchair or you've got like a stoma bag on your belly. It can be difficult for you know what do you wear because maybe the stoma bag or if you're in a wheelchair, I know it can be quite difficult. So I'm quite proud of her for creating that, if I'm honest. It will help a lot of disabled people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as I said, I mean, growing up, we were taught how to button shirts, how to do all those things that we struggle with. So, I mean, <laughs> We didn't have gone through all this if this if if such clothing lines were available at that time because yeah. uh, because I mean for me when uh, when I'm going to, to get something to wear I have to decide do I really want to struggle with battling my chest to do or exactly. to do, put on yeah. put on something simple which I don't have to battle it. Uh, well, um, and depending on where I'm going, this is there. Uh, when when I get to, to somewhere and I and I have to use the bathroom, is there some is this something that I need help? Especially something like, like a jumpsuit and things like that. So it's a difficult to, to put on and all those things. So you have, you have to make all those decisions when you are mm -hmm. when you are choosing your, your outfit for the day. And if there are such clothing lines available, it would, it would make life a bit easier for, easier, for, yeah. for us. Yeah. So, 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 so let's talk a bit about your swimming. You, you, mm -hmm. you are obviously an, 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 an ardent swimmer, as you can yeah. see in the video. Were you, were you self-conscious about swimming initially? No, never. Um, I got taught in school when I was nine years old. Um, I was probably a bit apprehensive at first, but the minute I hit the pool, I've loved it ever since. From nine till now, I have never stopped loving swimming. Never stopped loving. I love swimming. You're not self-conscious in the pool? No, if I'm honest. I mean, there are times where if I've gone to maybe like a different pool or like I go on holiday, then yeah, maybe. But otherwise, no, I don't. I don't really care. If I'm honest, that's good. I've never really cared at a swimming pool. That's good. Yeah, that's good. I mean, it's it, it, it's good to see that you're, you're owning your body and mm -hmm. loving your body because that is one thing that a lot of people with disabilities have a problem with loving yeah. themselves, loving their bodies, despite the, the deformities or things or exactly. that, that, that we have. But, yeah. But I always say God, God doesn't make make mistakes. So if this nope. is the body that that He has given you, who are you to complain about it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it has been lovely talking to you. Do you have any question for me? Um. Yeah. So you said you had you've got cerebral palsy, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So how how does it affect you? 
Well, I work with practice. Um, mm -hmm. I had, I have problems writing. So, so I started using the computer from a very early age. And that is how I got into my career of being a software, okay. of being a software engineer. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. But, but, but apart from that, I think I live a pretty normal life as much as, as I can. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, I, was in, I, I, I was only in a special school for, for one term when, when I was living in Manchester when I was seven, seven years old. Oh, you've come to Britain before? I, I, I was actually went to the University of Hertfordshire. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, my brother went there. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I was there for one year. Yeah. Oh wow! Nice. Okay. Yeah. 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 How, how about you? Which university were you in? I went to the Open University. Okay. Wow. Yeah. To to do um a degree in childcare. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I can. I, I wanted the whole, you know, I went, I went from, from home as students to be by myself for the first time in my life. Okay, yeah. nice. It was, it was really nice. I got, I got all the facilities that I needed to be able to be independent. That's good. That is, that, that is one great thing about Britain. They know how to take care of, of people with disabilities in terms of yeah. their the facilities and all those things. So, yeah. 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 Those 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 are some of the things that 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 we are fighting for in Ghana. Especially yeah. that the social the social welfare and all those things. So, but as yeah. I, as I say, I think it's it's a gradual fight. It's it's nothing that will happen overnight. And no. And, and for the past 15 or 20 years, I, I think there's been um, uh, an improvement in the, in, the, in the level of awareness when it comes to disability in Ghana. So, mm -hmm. so that's something that I'm grateful for. And, yeah. And, and there are a lot more advocates than there were when I started about, 10, about 15 years ago. So, Right now, it's not just family. There are lots of other people who are also advocating mm. for the rights of people. Yeah. And, and 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 I also always say that it's not it's, it's not just our fight. It's everybody's fight because it's a big, yeah. it, it, it doesn't discriminate. It can happen to anybody at any in, point. At any time, yeah. At any point in their life. So it, so it's up to people to ensure that that they do what what needs to be done to ensure that if it happens to them, they, they, they can survive and they will not start, 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 start wondering what to do with their lives and having to decide that thoughts and all those things. It's yeah. not, it's not about to live a fulfilled life with a disability, no matter where you are in the world. You know I mean? you, are, you, you and I are, are, are examples of that. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. We are. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So thank you once again for coming on. And oh, thank you for having me. And I wish you all the best in your acting career. I hope I hope I will see you in in in, in a BAFTA nominated movie. Version. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. When I'm when I'm definitely coming to Ghana next, I'll let you know. Please do, please do. I'll let you know. I, 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 it, it would be nice to hang out. Yeah. Oh, it will. 100%. I will do that. By the way, before you go, let me just ask one last question. The, the talk of, of COVID and the lockdown and all those things on you. Mm -hmm. what, what has it been? What has the impact been on you? you know? um, in the beginning, it was really hard because I'm somebody that is never in, in the house. I'm always out. Whether it's a function, a friend's place, work, I'm never here. So the first, let's say, four to six months, horrible. It was it was really bad. Because I remember I had a pan a really big panic attack at one point. It was bad. But um, I think I just remembered all my therapy skills that I learned and just 
you know, there were times, obviously, because the first time it happened, it was kind of spring, summer. So I would go for drives or I would go to like my brother's house and then sit outside and just have chats because uh, it was lockdown. You weren't allowed to go to anybody's house and et cetera. So I would just do that. And then I think that kind of helped to have that type of interaction, although I can't actually physically hug you or go in your house, but at least I'm outside of your house and we're talking, you know, so it helped. And then obviously recently we went into second lockdown, but because obviously of my job, it wasn't, I didn't really see the lockdown because I still had to go to work because I'm a key worker. So I, I was okay, the second one, thank God. But um, yeah, the first one in the beginning, hard, but I managed to get through it. So, yeah. yeah we, are so, we are survivors, aren't we? <laughs> we are, we are definitely survivors. Yeah. I like, really thank you once again and have, have You're welcome. enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Farida. Lovely speaking to you. Bye-bye. Bye.